Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Malhoyt, and I just want to give a five-minute presentation about what intra-EPG isolation is in Cisco application-centric infrastructure. So what, what are the basics of intra-EPG isolation? We just need to know that it blocks communication between endpoints within an endpoint group. The thing is it blocks everything. So what do I mean by that? Let's say we have a web endpoint group and an app endpoint group. And we have four VMs in each and a contract between them. The contract allows the VMs in the web endpoint group and the app endpoint group to communicate. So maybe it's a contract that allows HTTP or HTTPS or SSH or whatever, whatever protocol you're using. Now, by default with an ACI, we allow the VMs or endpoints, it could be bare metal as well, to communicate within those EPGs. Now, of course, they can't communicate each with each other unless we have that contract. But within that EPG, they can communicate by default at any time. So let's talk about intra-EPG isolation then. When we enable that or enforce intra-EPG isolation, we actually block that within the endpoint group and we block it for everything. So web one can't communicate with web four, app one can't communicate with app four, et cetera, et cetera. But what we do have is the ability to have web one now have HTTP access to app one and web one has HTTP access to app two Web1 has HTTP access to app3, and so on and so on with all of the VMs within our EPGs. We don't necessarily need all of our web servers to be able to communicate with each other, and we don't necessarily need all of our app servers to be able to communicate with each other. So this intra-EPG isolation really allows us to secure the environment even more than it already is with the whitelist model. Thanks for watching.